we have news here courtesy of the verge everyone's been talking about this i don't know why i don't know why anyone really cares because i think it's a fucking dead app and i don't give a shit but hey here i am got a podcast need to talk about these things facebook has changed the name of their company for some reason i was led to believe that facebook was changing the name of their company but it said what they're doing is they're making the company name the the kind of the name that kind of oversees all the apps that they've purchased into this new name but then facebook still stays because i thought they're changing the actual facebook name but they're not so anyway it continues mark zuckerberg's on why facebook is rebranding to meta right it says for the first time in 17 years mark zuckerberg has a new job title on thursday he officially became the ceo and chairman of meta the new parent company named for facebook so all those other brands like whatsapp instagram and shit that they have will just live under meta instead of living under the facebook the rebound is about to again i'm just saying this because i only understood it now i didn't get what was going on because for the longest time i thought they meant they were going to rebrand facebook and everyone was thinking i was because of all these hearings people are having all these flipping whistleblowers are coming out and exposing facebook for doing the exact same thing we know facebook have been doing for years and years and years but it wasn't actually it was something else so he's trying to explain who knows whatever it's continue Zuckerberg is staying in control of everything of course he is he told me in the interview that unlike the founders of Google who stepped aside in 2015 when it became part of a holding company called Alphabet he has no plans to give up the top job which makes sense and he lives to work he works to live everyone that I've kind of read who's kind of encountered him he's a bit of a weirdo but essentially he's a incredibly high high level operator so it makes sense that if he is the one steering this flipping behemoth this tanker around he should stick around as well to ensure he gets the next level it continues. Instead, the change is about recognizing a shift inside a company that's already been taking place. Zuckerberg has been pouring billions of dollars, at least 10 billion this year alone, into building the metaverse, an expansive, immersive version of the internet taken from the pages of the sci-fi movies like Snow Crash and Ready Player One. I think we're basically moving from being Facebook first as a company into being metaverse first. He told me a week over the phone. Um, while details are slim, the unified account system is going to be introduced on, to span all countries social media apps the oculus quest headset portal and future devices this means you won't need a facebook account to use quest which is i don't know i don't care but he continues rebrand to meta announced by zuckerberg today at the company's annual connect conference has been a has been a clandestine affair since he formally kicked off the project just over six months ago the small handful of employees involved had to sign separate non-disclosure agreements. Zuckerberg refused to tell me the name itself when we spoke on the day before Connect. He said that he had been thinking about a rebrand the company ever since he bought Instagram and WhatsApp in 2012 and 2014. But earlier this year, he realized that it was a time to make the change. And I think for whatever reason as well, they probably had to get all those other things in place like Instagram accounts and website domains and shit. Because people do do the thing where they kind of forgot what it's called. Is it parking domain park? I've got there's a term for it where if somebody's trying to do a rebrand, I think they did the same thing with the Redskins, right? Because they've meant to change their names because it's a politically incorrect name. So somebody I think found out or basically registered every iteration of whatever name they're gonna have. Um, and now basically they're in a position where they can't pick the name they want because the guy is basically your guy or girl is essentially trying to extort them or blackmail them into paying millions and millions of pounds to get this name. So if you're Facebook and you want to get this meta name, you're going to try and do it all behind the scenes, no one knowing so that you can work on those things without people finding out. I get it it says yeah i think that there was just a lot of confusion and awkwardness about having a company brand also be the brand of all the social media apps i think it's helpful for people to have a relationship with a company that's different from the relationship with any specific products that kind of subsides a soup so that's kind of supersedes all of that which again i'm not i'm not i don't mind i i'm a big fan of people having aliases i'm a big fan again that's why i'm in love with flipping people like hiroshi fujiwara nigo um you know John Takahashi, all these kind of legendary Japanese designers who you look back into in their future, in their archives, and they have many different brands, different projects, different side hustles they started and just ended abruptly or changed the name of or evolved into other things. And then those things then become kind of collectible. They have a little bit of a lore around them, a little bit of a story. And the same thing goes for this Facebook rebrand. I mean, it just creates mystique. It creates intrigue. It kind of refreshes the brand. It gives people a new direction to aim to. It's all kind of interesting. I like it. I like it, but I don't care. 
Zuckerberg knows that the timing of the rebrand is suspect. Over the past weeks, the company has been um, hit with non-stop barrage of criticism thanks to the leaked internal document provided to the media by a former employee named Francis Hogan um, or Hagen Hogan. Facebook is perhaps the most scrutinized company in the world right now and its brand has soured in the eyes of young people to many of its critics. Distancing the company from the brand and Zuckerberg from the Facebook will be seen as an ev evasion tactic, which it might be, but to be honest, considering how much people, considering how much the media seem to have a stick in their ass about Facebook um, they're not going to let that no one's going to forget it anyway and Jeremy and those hearings are going to live in people's memories forever man Mark Zuckerberg you know maybe that's how you have to be as well there's always an element of that and I think I was talking to somebody about it earlier like if you're going to be really successful in one field it's very unlikely you're also going to have the charisma of a Will Smith do you know what I mean he's obviously paid to be an entertainer he's paid to make people laugh make people smile but if you want to be a shark in the CEO world you're not going to be Kevin Hart yeah, I mean, you're just not. Obviously, he's got an element of it in his life, but in terms of being a shark businessman that's going to be able to kind of, you know, go into a town, strip a business, you know, fire a bunch of people and then kind of start it back up again and sell it for billions and billions for way more, way more than you bought it. You have to have a level of kind of coldness and cutthroatness about you that wouldn't allow you to be a Kevin Hart. You can't be, you can't be emph emphatic or em emph emphatic, whatever that thing is, um, to people and still do business in that way. So that's probably explains why Zuckerberg is so weird when it comes to having human interactions because he legitimately spends all his time on the computer. He doesn't probably even believe in human. I think if you actually sat him down properly, he'd probably say he doesn't even believe in human interactions. Do you know what I mean? He might be a little bit like, you know, these things are overrated. Let's move to a metaverse, which is obviously he's creating right now. Um, according to Zuckerberg, the current cycle of bad news had nothing to bear with this, had nothing to bear on this, even though I think some people might want to make that connection. I think that's sort of a ridiculous thing. If anything, I think this is not the environment that you want to introduce a new brand into, which is true, but it's a calculated risk. And you know what I mean? And these entrepreneurs, for the most part, are high risk gamblers so it took a calculated risk it's basically paid off loads of free press um and everyone's kind of wondering what the metaverse is the metaverse is an idea isn't new but it wasn't thrust into the mainstream conversation until zuckerberg started talking about it publicly earlier this year the concept originates from snow crash a dystopian movie in 1990s in which um, people flee the crumbling real world to be fully immersed into a virtual one that sounds like absolute hell to me while he acknowledges that the origins of the word are con um or Zuckerberg is trying to reclaim the metaverse as a utopian idea that will unlock an, an entirely new economy of virtual goods and services. The funny thing is the metaverse would have worked or would have been received far more um, happily pre-pandemic, right? Pre-pandemic, everyone had this vision of the world being, you know, via Zoom or video conference maybe not zoom maybe just video conferencing in general and just kind of connecting people digitally and you know collaborating on the phone all these sort of kind of like non-face-to-face -face contact stuff but then once we were in the pandemic and we were locked down and we were denied the ability to touch and feel our close family and friends just kind of hang out and have a beer people started to realize or started to kind of appreciate just how important human connection was do you know what I mean? And then stuff like the metaverse and all that sort of stuff kind of dwindled and people started to look at stuff like Black Mirror and get horrified instead of just being entertained. It then it then became suddenly that genre of TV and whatever it may be became straight up horror movies. People couldn't imagine a life where you'd just be sitting at home watching streams all day. Do you know what I mean? You needed some level of human interaction, human connection. So it's really interesting how the public consciousness or the public willingness to kind of, you know, um, commit themselves to a life in the metaverse has basically dwindled post pandemic or during the pandemic in the next decade he thinks most people will be spending their time fully immersed no they won't Three versions of the internet that span not just the metaverse hardware such as quest but devices made by others he's pushing these teams to build technology that could one day let you show up in a virtual space as a full colored avatar full bodied avatar um, or appears as a hologram of yourself in the real world living room of your friend who lives across the planet why would you want to do that why don't you go visit your friend? Like, it makes no sense. Um, and take some snacks across with you. Or maybe bring some back to give to your family. Like, why would you want to... Anyway, it, it, it's absolute bullshit. Of course, in places like San Francisco, maybe 
Silicon Valley specifically, um, you know, the coastal cities, New York, maybe some people would enjoy that. But I honestly do think people have learned to appreciate just in how important it is just to be able to go down to shops around the corner and get a sandwich. Do you know what I mean? To be able to have a cocktail, to be able to have a little bit of a boogie, watch a movie, all these sort of things that you probably took for granted and thought you could just do at home, all the stuff on Uber Eats, the same things like, no, actually going to a restaurant from time to time is actually quite cool. It's actually quite nice. It actually makes you feel good to be served, to, to be able to kind of make someone's night by giving them a big tip. Like all these little things that you don't get to do, you know, on the, on online are never going to change that way. But yeah, um, let's continue on. And this bit here, he says he's careful not to get into details, but he believes that there'll be a pretty role, sorry, pretty important pretty important role for crypto technology like nfts and smart contracts in metaverse one of the big questions that people are going to have about virtual goods and metaverse is do we do i really get to own this thing he told me or is it just um content that someone has basically just takes away from me from the future and i'm pretty sensitive to that and will give all the pressure sorry i'll give all the pressures that we've had to try to navigate around the censorship what's the definition of something that's harmful versus when you have to get into the way of people being able to express something yeah again i don't i don't give a shit about all this shit i think it's an absolute horror show and a nightmare and if anything it's a dystopian future that this guy's trying to bring about onto the world that most people are going to reject and push back on so i'm happy about that from what i've seen to five one online has been like now nah, go fuck yourself so that's been a good, good place to go and see people are just not having that sort of vibe at all which is good which is good which is good <laughs> 